editing this video and I had to pause and get on here and let you guys know that of all the content on this channel, this specific topic is one of my absolute favorites. Meeting a challenge with a solution that makes sense for our unique and specific households just brings me so much excitement to share with you guys. I hope you walk away with some inspiration and some ideas, so stick around. I'm super pumped about this video. Hey there, this is a sneak peek, a glimpse, an inside look from a homeschooling mama to six living with a chronic illness, and I create content to provide practical strategies and a place to relate for other mamas who, like a lot of us, are just making it work. Our current home does not allow for a designated room for all of our supplies and resources. Sometimes just seeing other people's spaces and how they have had to be creative and figure out how to just make things work kind of gives a new perspective to our own space. So I have asked several other mamas to share their homeschool spaces with you as well. They all have different layouts and varying circumstances and they're opening up their home to show you how they have made their space work for them. There's going to be a link to all those videos down in my description box. It's a huge playlist. Click that link and then you can just watch those videos one after the other and hopefully get some inspiration. With any space, there are hurdles and challenges, no matter what your unique situation is. So whether you have a designated school room or every room in your house is dual purpose, functionality and order can make the biggest difference in making your space work for you and not against you. There were three things that were super important to me when I was creating a homeschool space. Given our specific layout, meaning it was going to be in the middle of our living space, I wanted to make sure that it functioned for the little ones, that it was visually appealing, and that I could keep those resources managed. I am going to go into detail about each of those, but first, let's talk a little bit about organizational style. I figured out what my personal organizational style was through the clutter bug, and I was able to figure out what would work best for our children, and then we created systems that would actually work for us and not against us, and all of that was from the clutter bug. There are a few key concepts that have helped keep this setup sustainable. Simple solutions. Solutions that our children can easily carry out. For instance, the supplies needed for an activity or a lesson. They need to be easy to find and put away. This also motivates me to go ahead and include an activity and a lesson, and the children can definitely be part of cleaning up. If I create a complicated system that no one can carry out, then it's not going to work for us. I do macro organizing, so a lot of like items together. This makes cleanup super simple and not complicated for my little ones. This solution has proved itself over and over, meaning the kids are part of the cleanup, which in turn means our homeschool space can stay organized. Remember, we are only as strong as our weakest link. So coming up with solutions and means for even the littlest ones to contribute and be part of gathering the supplies or even putting the supplies away can really help alleviate some of that feeling of overwhelm and being spread too thin in the midst of wanting to create an amazing education for our children and incorporate all the things um, on top of trying to keep order um, in, in our spaces. So to address the visibly appealing criteria, we use a ton of hidden storage. So we invested in some cabinets with doors that close and cover up all of that curriculum. And that is just a personal preference of mine. I just prefer a nice, clean, tidy illusion that that things are, are in order. Again, finding my personal organizational style aided in finding solutions for all of our homeschool resources needing to be in our living spaces. Now I know I'm not the only one with circumstances that present the need to use some creativity when it comes to homeschool spaces. And there was a little bit of a panic once I realized we do not have a designated room for all of our stuff. But once I figured out what my style was and I really evaluated our space, I was able to come up with some solutions that, that work for us and that are visually appealing, that our children are able to utilize and it functions well. And we have figured out how to just make it work. 
Besides those four storage cabinets that I showed you that we use for hidden storage, we also have a closet where we store all of our toys and activities. Each have their own bin with the lids. We have designated times that we bring out these activities. And we also have a toy rotation system that I'll link below. Again, more hidden storage to contain all the things and to keep some order. If you find yourself getting kind of um, overwhelmed by all the things, maybe some hidden storage would be helpful because it gives an illusion that things are nice and tidy and it's, it is more um, visibly uh, minimal, if that makes sense. So some hidden storage has been super helpful for us. Now about those resources that I was concerned would completely take over our minimal amount of space. I have learned to organize for my space versus organize for my stuff. And I learned this from the clutter bug. Basically, I limit myself to the four hidden cabinets that we have and our toy closet. So whatever I can fit in those spaces, I keep. And the way I stay on top of that is I'm constantly evaluating things. Usually at the end of a school year, you know, I will know if that curriculum worked, if it's something I want to use for another child. Or, you know what, I thought that was going to work and it's not. So we have a local used curriculum store and I take all of my curriculum that I'm not using anymore and I, I sell it and I get credit over there and then I can use that credit for, for other curriculum. So I am constantly evaluating and looking through things and, and really assessing like, are we really going to use this or kind of letting it go? And it's hard when you have spent money on it and, and you had these high expectations of, of using them in your homeschool. But all those things we have to manage and sometimes that gets super overwhelming. So I limit myself to my space and then I'm consistently evaluating and, and passing things on. And in that it all stays super manageable. The challenge was accepted when I realized that I had to figure out a way to make our homeschool space work in the midst of our everyday living spaces. Instead of fighting against the problem, I found solutions that worked for our family and our specific organizational styles. And as far as where we do our lessons on a daily basis, around our kitchen table, around the island, the children have desks in their bedrooms, on the couch, on the hammocks, sitting on the trampoline. This has caused us to think outside the box. Throughout our last 14 years of homeschooling, we have had designated school rooms where we had room for all of our resources and activities and curriculum and, and all the supplies and even an area for our children to sit in this designated room. And I will say more often than not, even though we did have that designated space, we ended up spilling out into all the other rooms in the home because let's be honest, Daily life does not stop when we pull those books out because mom wears lots of hats, right? We are chef and, and counselor and event coordinator, all while spinning all the plates of redirecting toddlers and getting the laundry going and, and meal prep. Those things just don't stop. So what I have found that it's easier for me to be out in the middle of everything that's going on. So I found it kind of hard just to stay in one room. So really, we have actually made this work and I, I actually prefer um, not having a designated school room. And so kind of being stretched and, and pushed um, in this challenge has, has made me realize, you know what? This isn't as bad as I thought because I think we get in our head, there's only one way to do it because we try to bring the classroom into our home. But when we are homeschooling, we are home and we are in the midst of all the other things going on. I hope this video... Um, is encouraging, that it gives you some ideas and inspiration that you can incorporate into your home and maybe see your space in a whole new light. That playlist below is going to be full of, of other ideas that you can kind of take from and maybe just get some sparks of creativity going. Just Making It Work is also over on Instagram. So be sure and go check that out. So until the next video, I will chat with you in the comments below or over there on Instagram. Bye.